All right, again, my apologies for having to miss today with a sick kid. Um, but at this point, you should have done the um, cartoon warm-up. Um, you should have looked at the one speech from both sides and written up the main points from both sides and talked about which side you felt uh, you most agreed with and why and submitted that. And then this last part is where you're filling in the very last part of the Great War chart. If you remember from doing that lecture um, a few days ago, there was a bit of the chart that was left to do now um, after uh, the looking at both sides of the Senate debate. So um, treaties go to the Senate to... Uh, to debate and then decide to ratify or not. So that happened for the Treaty of Versailles. Um, but as you may have guessed from the cartoon um, and perhaps from the speeches is that the Treaty of Versailles failed in the Senate. So the Senate rejected the Treaty of Versailles. The Senate was more swayed by the voices of people like Henry Cabot Lodge. Um, and like I said, it was rejected. So before you move on to filling in the, those very, that very last box of the of the lecture chart. Go ahead and write down what you saw as the main arguments for and against uh, the treaty, just to keep those notes there for yourself for reference later, um, and then move on to fill in that last part of the box. So once you've done that, again, Senate rejects the Treaty of Versailles, um, and what they end up signing is a separate Treaty of Versailles. So Treaty of Versailles is accepted and passed in many nations in Europe, so most of the allies, so uh, England, France, etc., Germany, they accept the Treaty of Versailles, pass it, um, but they tweak it and change it because Wilson, because of the Senate, uh, Wilson's kind of idealism and his 14 points, all of that, he pulls out and they, they tweak the Treaty of Versailles um, to represent more of the ideas that they had wanted while Wilson had been present at the negotiations at Versailles. Um, his idealism and his mentality of kind of forgiving and forgetting and moving on towards world peace uh, had been incorporated into the Treaty of Versailles once he was no longer there. Um, the policies and desire for revenge on Germany, Austria, and the Ottoman Empire um, are worked into the Treaty of Versailles. And you can kind of see here a compare and contrast is that the only main uh, part of Wilson's vision for world peace and what the real Treaty of Versailles that is signed by Europe and the, the Allies um, is that the League of Nations is actually created but the U.S. does not join. Um, and we'll get to what they add in that kind of creates the environment in which World War II, the tensions that lead to World War II will build. So U.S., we signed a separate treaty um, with Germany, Austria, and the Ottoman Empire. Um, because we reject the Treaty of Versailles, um, and in doing so, we reject the League of Nations and do not join the League of Nations. And again, Wilson's voice is lost in the voice and his idealism is lost in the actual Treaty of Versailles that is signed by Europe. So sign a separate treaty. Treaty of Versailles is tweaked, no longer represents the idealism of Wilson and some of his big grand ideas for world peace. Um, and the U.S. thus does not join the League of Nations. The League of Nations is created, we do not join. Um, Europe builds in two things into the tweaked version of the Treaty of Versailles that Wilson did not want. Again, once he's out, it doesn't matter. Um, they put in two things. One is the War Guilt Clause, and that forced Germany to take the blame for the war, um, and as such, they are then forced to pay for the war. It was something to the order of about $30 billion dollars, um, and they uh, literally just paid that off in a, around 2010. So they have only recently paid off that war debt. Um, it was a lot of, it was a crippling amount of war debt, um, which created that financial environment in which the Nazi uh, party could kind of rise up and gain power. So Europe adds those two elements in that Wilson really did not want. Um, again, the war guilt clause, Germany must take the blame. They resent that and they must pay uh, a massive amount of war debt to the order of $30 billion-ish, um, and it cripples their economy for the next two decades. So that is it. If you have any questions, please email me, um, and make sure you look at what to study for the Unit 5 LEQ that will be on Wednesday.